Okay, um, so we're just done um, working on fitting, uh, finishing off fitting things to the primary chain case. Um, but I came across another problem, and that's with the uh, original rotor. So this is the original rotor, and we've got a replacement. Now, basically, when I came to fit the rotor, I've realised that the keyway at the back, let's see if I can get this to focus, that would help an awful lot. Uh, look, look how damaged that keyway is. Yeah. Now, I think that what's been happening is that that has been, you know, started to turn on the shaft, which is a, you know, once the thing is, once they start to go, then they, they really go badly. So um, they've had to replace a rotor, which has not been cheap. That's 100 quid for a new rotor. But it is a Lucas one. And you can see the keyway, you know, it's nice and sharp. It, it, well, unlike the focus, there, the keyway is nice and sharp, as you can see. Okay. Oh, also, uh, interesting thing to note is on the back of this one, this is the original no marks on the back. On the back of this one, you've got uh, two sets of marks, and they're marked A, A and B, three A's and three B's. And just by the by, those are the mark, the timing marks for a Triumph Trident. Because when they did the Trident, they built the Trident, they, they didn't bother making a new rotor with three marks on it. They thought, oh, that's a bit of a faff being Lucas, you know. Hey, <laughs> why should we make a new rotor with three marks on it? Tell you what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn the rotor over and we'll mark the, the marks on the back. So when you fit a, uh, a Trident uh, rotor, you always fit it backwards like this. Why are there six marks? Because early Tridents, the, uh, the keyway uh, was in a different position. So for, I think it, is it A? I think early Tridents, you use the, the three marks for A. Then they moved to... Uh, not the key uh, way, but the, on the actual crankshaft, they moved the position of the key round for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, I think there was some sort of weakness. I'm not sure why, but they moved the position of the the, the key round so the whole rotor moved around about 25 degrees. So then you use the B marks for later tridents. There you go, just uh, for interest. The only other thing that I'm not sure about, and I probably am going to address it, is if you look at the original, it's uh, it's been cut away here, whereas the replacement hasn't. And this is the sort of, a, I feel the conical washer, I feel what they call it, but it's a sprung like lot washer. And I think that's been cut away so that the washer can sit flat. Whereas on the new one, obviously the washer only sits on the timing marks. And then there's a gap like underneath, you know, it doesn't sit, doesn't sit flush at all on the rotor. So um, I'm probably going to, as with this, I'm probably just going to grind the ends off the timing marks just so that this washer will sit flush and flat all the way, all the way around. Yeah, I don't like that. Not sitting, not seating properly. Um, yeah, but there we go. So a new rotor. Uh, macho money, but there we go. Uh, I'm thinking maybe we should have got a pattern one, but I don't know. You can get, was it what uh, what they called? I've forgotten the name. Cheaper ones, begins with a W. But Wassel. Wassel? Yeah, I think it's Wassel. Probably about half the price, but anyway, this is a genuine Lucas one, so there we go. Okay, there we go. I've just ground down the Timing marks. It's only um, alloy ground down very easily. I just took the edge of the name off the word Lucas because it was just uh, sitting on that as well. So now that washer, I always say the old dishwasher, the old dishwasher sits uh, nice and flat on the rotor now. And of course, you're not losing it any uh, timing mark because it would be underneath the washer anyway. Okay, so I'm not happy like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm getting ready to actually put the rotor on. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, 
there is a spacer that normally goes on behind the rotor uh, and sits on the uh, engine sprocket. But because this is a belt drive conversion, the sprocket's thicker and it's got, uh, and we have this, um, this plate, this plate goes on a uh, sort of guide, which prevents the belt from coming off the sprocket. And I realized that because of that, because it all being thicker, you don't use the spacer. I mentioned that because it doesn't actually say that in the uh, destructions, in the instructions. Uh, okay, but you don't use that. Now, when you, the rotor was originally put on, it did have extra, these extra spacers fitted behind the rotor and behind the um, spacer. Uh, and I am going to use those because I want the rotor uh, to uh, come out because it does seem to be a bit indented in relation to the stator. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the I'm going to fit the rotor to the crankshaft, okay, um, and then we'll fit the stator over the top. Now the stator, as you will see later on, it has to fit with a gap all the way around the rotor. It's a very tight fit. Now the only way, in the clever British engineering style, if it if it's slightly off centre, and I know it is slightly off centre. Uh, um, the only way of moving, of adjusting the gap between the rotor uh, on the inside and the stator on the outside is by bending <laughs> these studs. I think in the manual it says something like carefully adjust the studs, which basically means either whacking them or getting some moles on them and sort of bending them. But that's the only way of adjusting the position of the stator relative to the rotor. Obviously, you can't move the rotor. It's on the crankshaft. So you've got to move the stator, which is on these studs, and there's no adjustment on the studs. The only way is to bend these studs. Now, of course, the studs go into alloy. Uh, at least one advantage of this, the only advantage is that this is a chain case. I think on the Trident, as I remember, these studs go into the crank case. So if you did whack those and break the casing, you, you, you know, you've know got to take everything apart and re-weld the case. At least, I'm not intending to, but if you did break the casing, at least it is only the primary casing that you'd be breaking in this case, but still not great. Right, so I've managed to knock the rotor on. That's good, and it's nice and tight on the crankshaft, which is great. I've got my locking tool in position. I'm not sure that doesn't come doesn't come out of position. If that does come off, the, that comes off, and then it's going to be a mighty problem. Don't come off, please. Don't you dare come off. Right. Um, then I've got some Loctite, which I'm going to put on the threads of the uh, rotor nut. Because what we've got to do now is we've got to tighten the uh, rotor up to uh, 80 foot pounds, which is hefty. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it in terms of whether I can actually hold the engine down. I really don't know. Got my gloves on. Probably not a good idea. Uh, yeah, rotating up like spring side outwards, you know, dome side outwards. I know this is going to be a tight fit in the rotor. Okay, I've got the uh, nut started now. I didn't want to go on. And it is tight in the rotor, but that's okay. It's going on now eventually so I'm just going to do it up with the ratchet and then we're going to try with the torque wrench but I don't know how we'll do I really don't okay we're getting to the tightening up point with the torque wrench now um, yeah and what I've done is I've put an extension bar on the locking tool because it just wasn't able to lock. And hopefully with that and me pushing down on the swinging arm, we might get there. I don't know if we will, 
but it's 80 foot pounds. Come on, we can do this. I'm sure we can do this. Jesus. Come on. Come on, we can do this. Oh my God. Yeah, we got it. Limey. What a job. I didn't want to go at all. But, whew, but we got it now. Whew, rotor's on. It's not coming off again. Good work. Yeah, just a little postscript on the uh, doing up the uh, engine, you know, the rotor nut. Uh, really, of course, I, I shouldn't have the barrels on yet. And then I could have locked the engine a lot more easily uh, on the crankshaft. Um, but basically, I was waiting. I had to wait about a week for the uh, belt drive kit to arrive. And I was twiddling my thumbs, so I thought... I might as well fit the barrels while I'm waiting. So that's why the barrels are now on. We will come back to cover fitting the barrels when I finish the primary chain case, but I fitted them slightly prematurely, uh, knowing that I could lock the engine uh, on with that locking tool. But it did, because that has to be done up so tight, that nut, this one was okay because it's like directly on the tool. But then, of course, we've got the belt and one thing or another. So... Uh, and this being done up tighter so that was a real struggle whereas I think if I've been able to lock the crankshaft either through the small ends or with a shaft in the actual crankshaft as we did before that would have been easier to tighten that nut up okay